toys. I love toys. Do you love toys? You should love toys, because toys can make you a lot of money. They're nostalgic and they're fun. And today, I'm going to talk about seven, yes, seven toy lines. We're going to have some unique stuff on here today that you may never have heard of. And I want you to put it up in here and remember for when you're in the thrift store, if you do spot them, because some of this stuff is crazy money. Now we're going to start with something that everyone knows. And back in the day when these were released, there was actually physical altercations just trying to get these toys because they were so big. People really wanted them. That is Cabbage Patch dolls. Cabbage Patch Kids, um, they were originally called Little People. The reason these were so big was because every doll was so unique. They all had their own little physical appearances. They were all just different in some little way. And they had that adoptability. So instead of actually buying a doll, you're adopting the doll. Um, or the kid, as the whoever created them, whatever his name was, he wanted to adopt them. He didn't want to buy these things. So they came with a birth certificate and all that sort of thing. And they even had a little signature on their ass. That might make me a cabbage patch kid. I, I, I they created these ones called the snack time kids where you put a little chip in its mouth and they had little rollers in there that would actually make it eat it and shit it out. But they almost become cannibals because they're eating kids' hair and fingers and all that sort of stuff. And there was a few emergency calls and all that sort of stuff. But um, Cabbage Patch Kids now actually can go for absolutely wicked money. And op shops are pretty aware of that. Everyone knows what Cabbage Patch Kids are. And quite often you'll see them in the glass cabinet without any knowledge whatsoever. They whack it in there, they put a crazy price on it. Now sometimes you're thinking, that's a lot of money for that thing. Uh, what a joke. Fuck you, op shop. All that sort of stuff. But, but remember, some of these can be worth a lot more. They might not have done their actual research and got that right figure for this. So always make sure you've actually looked what this is worth, what year it's from, and you've done a little bit of research on it. They were called dinosaurs. These next figures are the dinosaurs. Have you ever heard of dinosaurs? Maybe not. There's another little dinosaur show we're going to talk about soon, but the dinosaurs was actually a show in the late 80s. There was only about 60 episodes of it, and they made this little line of toys. Galoob actually made these toys originally, and then after the show got scrapped, the toy line got scrapped. Another company did buy it out, but completely scrapped. So that means that there wasn't heaps of this toy around, and now they actually go for pretty crazy money. You can get some of these toys loose for anywhere between four and 600 bucks on eBay US dollars. They're very, very hard to find here down under. Um, very, very hard to find in the wild, that's for sure. But, you know, auctions do pop up. There's uh, always lots of stuff going up. I've seen them before. And man, people collect these things and they pay some really good money. So keep your eyes peeled for these ones. Breath Blasters. Late 80s, there was a bit of a gross out trend with garbage pail kids and all that sort of stuff. And these breath blasters were actually made. There were so many different characters and they all had different breath. There was like vomit mouth dude and all that. And there was actually morning breath, which was actually based around Margaret Thatcher, which caused a bit of an uproar. Um, these things were quite popular, especially in America and all that sort of stuff. And what happened was these toys were actually classed as non-toxic. And it turns out they were actually fucking toxic. So the chemicals that kids were breathing in actually made kids vomit. <coughs> kids actually puked at the smell of some of these things. It was like shitty mouth fucking Fred or whatever his name was and all these different ones. They're really cool, really unique. But now, because they were actually pulled off the shelves because of the chemicals inside of them, very, very hard to get. Talk boy, please tell me you know what a talk boy is. The father. Yes, sir. I'd like a hotel room, please, yes. with an extra large bed, a TV. Thank you, Macaulay. We all love Home Alone. We all grew up with Home Alone. And that little thing that he used to cart around and talk to was the talk boy, made famous by Home Alone. Now, people ended up, this, this got put out from the movie and they were put on shelves and people used to buy the talk boy and it was fully functional, little uh, radio recorder there. And nowadays they are actually worth really good money because they were so hard to get and you just don't see them anymore. I have actually seen some in package go for ridiculous money. So um, look, 
Once again, this is another one that's going to be super rare to find in an op shop, but if you're browsing through Marketplace and places like eBay, you might see them come up for a steal. Sometimes people don't actually know what they've got. So who knows, uh, a talk boy might come up fairly cheap and if it's not actually labeled as a talk boy, snap it up because um, that Home Alone franchise blew these up and they are worth really good money. So you, you're looking at anywhere between 60 to 100 to $150 for a talk boy. It just depends on how many are around at the time. Now this next one, everyone, every single person that's watching this video knows exactly what this line is, and that's Star Wars. Everyone knows Star Wars, you've heard of Star Wars, and a lot of people love Star Wars. Me not so much, I was never into it, but the toys, uh, absolutely love them, because there's so many golden nuggets out there that actually create really good money. Now, the problem with it, on this scale, Star Wars is mass produced. There is Star Wars everywhere. Nearly every op shop you go into, you might find something Star Wars, whether it's a book, a movie, a t-shirt, there's just Star Wars fucking everywhere. And that makes it really tricky with the toys. So you really need to knuckle down and do your research. One, Google Lens, I've spoken about it, is a very good option. And then looking at the dates on the feet, on the bum, wherever the, the dates are, the year it was made, is the next important thing. And then the manufacturer, who actually made the toy. By putting all these together, then doing a little bit of research, you'll find out a rough value, then you can do your comps on eBay and all that sort of stuff. But some of the original stuff just goes for mental money. And, you know, some of our dads and stuff, like I'm talking for some of my age, they, they may, have, may have had that stuff. Now, if you've been following this channel for a little itty bitty of time, you'd know I have a big fascination for street sharks. I love street sharks, I grew up with it, and I preach them all the time. I just love these things, I love finding them, I love keeping them, they're just the coolest shit ever. Anyway, we'll stop talking about the street sharks because we're talking about muscle mutts. Streetwise Designs made the muscle mutts, and they are very similar to the street sharks. They actually are built like them, so you just got this dog full of teeth and, you know, these big weird bodies and shit. They look like they're on steroids. So basically, Muscle Mutts was made into four different toys. There was four figures, and they were released. They were followed up by a third of four toys, so there's eight in total. Um, basically, it was just this ripoff of Street Sharks by the same people, and it was just a follow-on that actually never really took off. That was the issue with it. There was, um, you know, people got into it, and then it was kind of scrapped, and that was the end of it. They're, the figures themselves even look kind of bootleg, just from the weird colours and shit that they got. I think they're really fascinating, really cool, and that's something I just want to get my hands on for a personal. I think, uh, I think they're an amazing looking toy. So now these figures are actually going loose for like two hundred dollars. $250, I don't even know what they're going for in the packaging. It's pretty rare to see that. Um, I have seen it once before and they actually went kind of cheap. So the prices of these muscle mutts is uh, pretty crazy now. This is something that I try and poach on international auctions. So I'd really love to poach a couple of American auction toy lots and stuff. I buy a lot of toy lots, international lots off other people. And I'm just hoping one day we get some muscle mutts in there because you get an individual one of these, you're getting $200 every day of the week. And look, if you can actually find one of these in an op shop, please let me know. Or if you're familiar with Muscle Mutts, drop it in the comments and let me know about these things because they really intrigue me and I know they're worth a lot of money. I just haven't got my hands on them yet. And this final one that I want to talk about is Dino Riders. If you're not familiar with Dino Riders, it was a show or a cartoon in the late 80s, 88 I think it was, and it was just all these dinosaurs, these dudes riding them and they were fighting and shit. And basically, um, the show was a bit of an adaption to blow up a toy series, which was very common in the 80s and or the late 80s and early 90s. If there was a toy line produced, then they'd make a show to, you know, expose that toy line. It was um, kind of rolls reverse these days. They, they bring the toys out after the show. So anyway, that was a plan with these the Dino Riders. And basically, the show only lasted 14 episodes. So it ended up with like a really cult-like sort of following. People really loved it, and that meant there was people chasing the toys, or people have got onto it now, and now they're just trying to get those toys. So some of them are absolutely ridiculous. They come with so many different little bits and pieces, so it's super hard to find one that's complete. That is the issue, but for, for example, the old Bronchosaurus, if you can actually find that complete, you can get upwards of a $1,000. One fucking thousand fucking dollars. Holy and some of them were like, you know, this big, 
massive. So a super crazy following, and th this goes on the theme of the dinosaur stuff. We, we spoke of the other ones earlier, and I've done previous videos on Jurassic Park, Jurassic World figures. There is a massive following for anything to do with dinosaurs. Kids love dinosaurs. It doesn't matter what area you come from. There has always been dinosaurs, dinosaur toys, different series. So even outside of these two that I'm talking about today, if you see some dinosaurs in an op shop or on Facebook Marketplace, it's worth your time. Just comping it out. Get the Google Lens out. See what it actually is. See where it's come from, what era it's from. Because there's some crazy money just getting thrown up in the dino world. Um, there's so many dino nerds. And I think it's great. I love Jurassic Park. I was a big fan of that. And I, lo I love all these toys. So definitely never just turn your, turn your back on some dinosaur figures. Even if they look very basic. Because some of the old bootleg shit actually still sells pretty goddamn good. So that's going to wrap up today. I've done seven. Now, if you do like these style of videos and you want to see more, please tell me in the comments because I love talking toys and I want to talk a lot more toys. So if you want to see these videos, let me know. I will drop some more. Appreciate the love. And if you did, if you did love it, if you did like it, hit that thumb. And if you're not subbed yet, you like this sort of stuff, hit that sub button because it helps me out and it up the algorithms. I will see you in the next video, and I promise next time I won't get my bum out. I'm sorry about that, but it was just uncanny that they had tattoos on their bum too. And See you in the next one.